Hello and welcome our listeners who are watching and listening to our podcast, The Global Smart Cities. Today in this episode, our guest is Dr. Hendrik Haman, the Chief Science Officer for Climate and Sustainability from IPM. Hello, Mr. Uh, Dr. Haman. Hello. Dr. Haman, I'm curious about your take on uh, smart cities. How do you see them helping us tackle climate change? Yeah, so that's a um, really important question. Mm. Of course, what we see is that more and more people live in cities. So the trend overall goes to urbanization, mm -hmm. which means most of the anthropogenic emissions are caused by people and they're caused then in cities. Mm -hmm. So if we invest into smarter cities, helping cities to have less emissions, a smaller carbon footprint to become more sustainable, mm -hmm. It will be a huge contribution to limiting the impacts of climate change. And so cities is a really smart cities is a really important key piece to, to the whole puzzle. So in terms of then what can a smart city do to mm -hmm. help meet climate goals? We really want to think about three areas. Mm -hmm. The first area is which is the start, the base. As a city you want to use smarter city concepts, digitization, these technologies to understand where do the emissions, the carbon footprint is coming from. Is it in the transportation? Is it in the traffic? Is it in the buildings? Is it where you source your energy from, etc., etc. Mm. So that just gets you to understand where you are. Mm. And then we want to think about two uh, aspects of taking the next actions. One is on mitigation. Mitigation means what can you do to reduce these emissions? Okay, can mm. you do ride sharing? Can you have um, better energy efficiency in the buildings? Yeah. Can you schedule uh, energy so you can take advantage of renewable energy, etc.? Or can you, for example, think about um, um, planting trees, right, to sequester carbon. That's all mitigation. Mm -hmm. So you measure, you know where your emissions are as a city, as a community, and then you think about where can you mitigate it. And then on the other side of the mitigation is the adaptation for climate change. So no matter what, um, with the current rates, we will see further impacts of climate change, right? We are if we meet the most ambitious goals at 1.5 degrees C. Mm -hmm. And of course, we need to find ways to adapt mm -hmm. to climate change. So it will get hotter. Mm -hmm. It will definitely get hotter in most places around the globe. So can you think about strategies, how to avoid, for example, urban mm -hmm. heat islands? And so the smart city concept is key to in the big picture, because most people live in cities. Yeah. It's key to... Um, it can actually help to measure the emissions of most people and then think about mitigation and adaptation strategies. Smart cities are all uh, the rage right now and it's uh, fascinating how they are uh, interwined with cutting edge technology like AI machine, uh, learning, IoT and big data. So can you share how these tools are shaping eco-friendly uh, cities? Yeah, I mean... Um, key is, you know, smarter city starts with technology. It starts really, if you think about it technically, from a digitization aspect. So you can be smarter, you can be much easier smarter if everything is digitized in the city. So you know where the roads are, you know the traffic, you know the energy is consumed, etc. And that is all, and you have it in a digital form. So you can use uh, technologies like AI, machine learning, mm. to think about what can you do, right? Same, same topics we just talked about. It. What can you do to measure efficiencies, measure emissions? What can you do to mitigate? What can you do to, for, for adaptation? And then technology, of course, is super important in the digitization, but not only that but then taking advantage mm -hmm. of that digitization through AI and machine learning. So it's kind of interesting if you think about it, right? So we have all the technology, mm -hmm. all the computers, we have, of course, smartphones, 
and we use it on one hand to gather all the information, but then we also use the same technology to make us smarter how we should be operating, how the traffic should flow, and, and so on and so forth. Now, a particular interesting technology is, of course, AI. And AI is at the end, if you really want to simplify it or you take machine learning and AI together, at the end, there's the simplest way to get from this massive amount of digital information we got through the digitization efforts to decisions and insights. And, and we're going to see that more and more. In the, in the old days, AI was relatively specific, only experts would do it. We would have, uh, people call them bespoke, or very specific mm. models for AI to, to do something in the smart city context, for example, traffic routing, these kind of things. But today we even can think about building general AI models, which can actually be used for all kinds of different cities, for all kinds of different tasks. So we have that emergence of foundation models, which, um, which is what this is called. And so that's a, a game changer. So in technology, especially AI, will play a huge role um, as we are progressing in smart cities. Awesome. Uh, so with the recent uh, push at COP28 to move away from fossil fuel, it seems like renewable energy is more crucial than ever, especially uh, for smart cities. Uh, what's your view on the importance of renewables in this new urban landscape? Yeah, I mean, renewable energy um, can have, of course, multiple forms, right? It can be the wind, it can be solar, it can be, um, it, it, it can be hydro. It can even be technologies which, at least conceptually, are based on fossil fuels, mm -hmm. but you do carbon capture, for example. So at the end, renewables can be lots of forms of energy. Um, and, so, and so, yes, they're going to play an enormous role. Eventually, everything has to be renewable because renewable is just a different word for sustainable. Mm -hmm. And so sooner or later, whatever form of energy, whether it's wind or whether it is um, natural gas together with carbon sequestration, whatever technology we're going to use, it has to be renewable. I think in the short term, Sure, we're going to have, because these technologies are really mature, like solar and wind. Now, um, the challenge with these technologies is mm -hmm. that they are intermittent and um, energy density is also something, but the intermittency is a challenge to electric grids, to the power grid, because the power grid is designed to work with dispatchable loads, and sorry, dispatchable generation and predictable loads. Now, so solar, you don't have really dispatchable and wind dispatchable because you're you're you're, depend, you're relying on wind and, and, mm. and solar. Um, building sustainable smart cities sounds like a dream, uh, but I'm sure there are hurdles, challenges. So, uh, from your experience, uh, what are the big challenges we are facing, and how uh, we can get past them? Yeah, I mean, I will just say, I will just talk about technical challenges. Mm -hmm. So we are well on our way digitizing, and I said that already, right? That's a prerequisite of a smart city. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be digital or as much. And that is happening. Now that brings AI in to do smarter decisions, to do the measurements, the mitigation, the adaptation we talked about. But of course, the AI we're using has to be trusted, mm -hmm. it has to be explainable, it has to be safe. And in the smart city context, that's extremely important because smarter city services are really important. So you can't be really wrong. And so you really got to have AI which everyone can trust. And I think a challenge is always an opportunity, but the opportunity is that through collaboration, we can build that mm -hmm. trust in these technologies. So on one hand, yes, it is a challenge to get everyone to work with, with each other because that's the only way we solve this problem of trust with the AI. But on the other hand, it's of course an opportunity because yeah. we have to work together. 
Yeah. How, how do you think uh, can governments collaborate uh, uh, to 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 support the smart cities? Yeah, I think public-private partnerships should play a key mm. role. And um, you know, during an earlier session here, I was asked, "What do you think is the most important service mm. a smart city could offer?" To to um, to its citizens, and I think it's a really difficult question to answer because you think, yeah. well, it would be great if the traffic would be exactly. Reduced. This is especially here at Riyadh. <laughs> exactly, yeah. um, it would be great if the air would be cleaner. But the one thing which is probably the most important one is the government has and and and, and the, the public sector has to really help to enable an ecosystem. Mm. So any services around open data, making data accessible, gives the opportunity for the whole ecosystem, right, to contribute, to build, to innovate on top, innovate services the government can never think of. But that's where these two things can come together, right? And I think that's um, that's a really important area yeah. uh, how we how we can work together. And by the way, that that approach also drives trust. Because at that point, all these services you build on top of a smarter city infrastructure of all this information which is being gathered is not being just controlled by one company or a few, but by everyone. Um, totally agree. So, Dr. Hendrik Hammann, uh, now we are in the forum, forum of the global smart cities. Uh, while uh, a lot of governments, leaders, companies, and technology are here in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. How do you think this kind of forum will help uh, and uh, support the smart cities? Yeah, so we just said how important collaboration is. Yeah. That's exactly why we have this meeting. Yeah. And so it's all about collaboration, right? The smart city challenges, the climate change challenges cannot be solved by one city. Yeah. Right? They can only be solved by collaboration. The questions we have about AI not a single company can solve it, not even a single country can solve it, right? Mm. It is about ways the to world, collaborate. Yeah. It is about everyone collaborating, giving the opportunity to to do the best out of the opportunities which we have. Right? And so that's, of course, a great place to discuss and, 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 and the call for action. Yes. Dr. Hendrik Haman, thank you for your time. Uh, it was really informative uh, information and uh, uh, we hope to see you uh, in any of their farms in uh, Riyadh or in any city in Saudi Arabia. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, our listeners, who's watching our episode today with Dr. Hendrik Haman, Chief Science Officer for Climate and Sustainability from IBM. And see you in the next episode.